I am Aotearoa, and Aotearoa is me. Ko au te rangi, ko te rangi ko au. I am the sky, and the sky is me. Each day brings light, warmth, energy. From the blustering gales, or the gentle kisses of the wind, we harness power, and from the sun's rays flowing plentiful and free, above the clouds that burst and quench the soil, to feed our forests and our trees. This we shall know with every fresh breath of air that we breathe. Ko hau te moana, ko te moana, ko au. I am the ocean, and the ocean is me. The tumbling waves, where the land and sea meet, roaring wild and relentless, but never taking or inundating our cities, our towns, or our homes. Only a tonga, a treasure, the taste on your lips just before you plunge into a sea of colour, weaving in and out of the weeds are a shimmer of scales. No need to search, only to see, in a vast stretch of water, a sanctuary from you and me. Ko o te awa, ko te awa ko o. I am the river, and the river is me. A silver ribbon, winding from the serrated skyline, down to the lakes and the sea. Pure ripples of glass, swimmable, drinkable, livable, undulating with life. Ko hau te ngahiri, ko te ngahiri, ko hau. I am the forest, and the forest is me. The whisper of leaves and their rich aroma, infused in the air we breathe. A war of wings, the scuttle of creatures, seen and those unseen. The symphony, trumpeting down from the trees, a chorus restored in a land predator-free. Ko au te whenua, ko te whenua, ko au. I am the land, and the land is me. The earth beneath our feet, the place we call home, the soil that sustains us, our crops, our pastures, our forests, our land of Donga, where every resource is reused, not left to fester, buried deep within Papatuanuku. I am Aotearoa, and Aotearoa is me. Our environment sustains us, supports us, is a part of us. Our future is interconnected. We are inseparable forces, and we are powerful forces that can make a difference. Once we truly understand that the world today is ours to borrow, only then will we start thinking about tomorrow. Ki te kahuri he whakakitenga ka ngaro te iwi. Without foresight or vision, the people will be lost. So do not be afraid to be the first to change. Do not be afraid to be the first, the first to aspire or the first to inspire. We must see with our emotions just as we see with our eyes, because if not us, who? If not now, when? You are the kai tiaki, the guardians for the children, grandchildren and children yet to be born. You are Aotearoa and Aotearoa is you. Kia ora whanau. Um, great to be here and I've been kind of contemplating what can I add to the amazing richness that we've talked about in the last couple of days. That, that video was shot from um, a group of our summer interns, some of them are still at school and they did it within a day and uh, then uh, presented it back to us uh, as a challenge to us about a reminder about why we do what we do. And it's been very powerful. It made uh, some of my people cry. We also showed it to a group of business leaders uh, who also were moved by it. And it's just a reminder that why we're here is uh, for that future generation and, and uh, channeling Johan about uh, we can't wait for them to come through to shift this for us. So a couple of things I wanted to add to the kind of conversation that we've been having. You all get it, you all know uh, our planet is finite, it is amazing and uh, we don't thrive unless, unless we have a healthy planet. So you get this, you are the champions of change sitting in this group. So I don't need to tell you more about that. But there are a couple of thoughts I would kind of flick in. Um, before I do that, 
I do want those who are overseas visitors uh, to know that uh, New Zealand, while uh, we may be better in the world in some aspects, if we keep going like we are, uh, actually we're not as great as you respond, you, you reflect back to us. So a lot of people have said to me over the last week, wow, it's really amazing. Uh, a few stats for you. Uh, and, um, you know, we've done our environmental studies. So our water, waterways are increasingly coming under stress. So what we're seeing now in terms of nitrogen levels are the result of 30 years ago, uh, World War II veterans coming back and being given land and putting nitrogen on the soil. It is not the current intensification uh, of farming uh, in terms of the nitrogen application in the last 30 years. So, um, you know, our nitrogen co concentrations have worsened 55%. Um, in, a, in a very short period. Uh, and um, the amount of irrigated land has increased by 70%. The amount of um, intensive dairying has increased as well. Uh, for a, a, another big thing is sediment in this country. So we have 190 million tonnes of sediment, go, sediment going into our waterways every year. So it's about 308 caterpillar trucks uh, worth of topsoil going into our freshwater uh, rivers and streams, but also going out to ocean and into the marine environment. It's having a major impact on uh, not just the quality of the waterways, but also uh, seafood and ability to grow uh, fish uh, in farms. 75% um, of our freshwater fish and 30% of our plants are, at, are threatened uh, at risk of extinction. And in New Zealand we have endemic species, um, and so species that only are here, and uh, we have 3,000 of those that are either at risk of extinction or are threatened to be at risk of extinction. So I just, um, you know, yes, New Zealand has a lot of good going for it, but also uh, we're not on the right path either. Uh, so um, don't want to, you know, make you depressed as uh, Johan does. He does a great thing of being able to make you depressed and then make you hopeful, so I'll try as well. Um, <laughs> so some thoughts, um, because everybody in this room is a change agent, effectively. Um, and I wouldn't say just change, because change is just incremental things that you do better. I think the, the thing we've got to really challenge is the transformation. Right, how do we transform? Um, uh, so a couple of thoughts. One is um, uh, we have a moment in time, I, I mean I have to believe this because otherwise I would get depressed in my job, but we have a moment in time where we have a new administration who is looking at some fundamental uh, pieces in our architecture which will lock in the ability to transform the way we think about New Zealand and the way we grow. So, for example, the Climate Act uh, that we, all come, we will be coming out to consult in, in May and June is one of the pieces of architecture that will be world-leading, uh, even if it is not as aspirational when we get there as we would like, but having targets in legislation binds future governments, and that is massive. Um, so I encourage you all to be involved get engaged, get up to select committee and tell them this is possible. Um, so that's kind of that piece of it. Uh, in terms of ar the ar architecture, we've got ministers, um, and we've just come from one of them and, and Johan in front of them, and it was just an amazing conversation, but really interested in um, putting in sustainable development measures into our Public Finance Act or wellbeing measures into the way we think about running this country um, and having a wellbeing budget hooked off that. Now that's all laudable and great, but one of the things I got really excited about today is um, we're talking to Johan about, and this is where the and comes in between Johan and Charles, I think, about thinking about how to use the planetary boundaries framework in setting and together with the wellbeing measures indicators. So thinking about doing a mashup on that with Johan and some overseas um, people, but I think Coming to measures and what do we measure here in New Zealand and coming away from a conversation that says, uh, well, yes, we really want to do something about climate change and water quality, but we, we can't do that because people are going to be out of jobs. Right? So that's the kind of conversation we have. And the, what, what this allows us to do is start to think about the integration between all of the measures of environment, so not just climate, but biodiversity, water, uh, etc., and also you can have better well-being of people. So I th this is the end between Charles and me and Johan for me. You know? um, so really exciting. That is really exciting. It would be a world-leading piece uh, where 
we're trying to take planetary boundaries into how we think about targets in New Zealand. So I'm um, really excited about that. If you're interested in helping, that'd be cool. Um, Felix, I've got you on my list. Yeah. Um, the other thought is food. Uh, and I actually take that a little bit like Melissa to land use. So um, thinking about how we grow our food and turning uh, that into a positive thing uh, rather than a negative and binary conversation about uh, how do we work out to how to do farming just a bit better? Uh, how do we actually grow something here that is truly sustainable? So I think that is one of our biggest challenges. Agriculture here is our biggest challenge. We've, we, you know, we have 80% renewable energy. We will have 100% renewable electricity as one of the um, things that we will move on in the next little while. Uh, Agriculture is it in terms of the biggest shift, and and again with Johan, um, you know he he emphasises that that's you know the platform to get to Paris is not just decarbonising your economy, it's sustainable uh, farming and also the carbon sink. So he talked about that. So that piece for us, if you're interested in doing anything in New Zealand, find a way into that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a direct way. I kind of raised this yesterday. Um, new ways of technology, sensing, uh, new precision farming, things that might be outside of, you know, even uh, Andy and her blockchain and health data, how does that fit with food production? You know, so I would just um, be open to think about how you might work as a collective community to think about some of our biggest issues. Um, the, um, the new financial tools too, so... You wouldn't, uh, I think it's great that we have government wanting to invest uh, in regions and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think as a country, you know, we can't afford uh, what we've got right now. Uh, we don't, we have a very small tax base. Uh, so think it might, we might get a grant for three years and then, you know, you don't have anything and that's not going to sustain change or transformation. So thinking about impact investment, new financial tools, how do we bring those into New Zealand uh, and really scale up some of it, or scale up in my language, not in economic language, uh, leverage off um, what we've got here. And we've, so our Freshwater Improvement Fund, for example, we uh, not only have required that it be 50% leverage with other funding, but that it's actually targeted to the vulnerable waterways in New Zealand and not scattergunned across New Zealand so that we can stop them from tipping over. So it's that kind of thing. Where can you leverage? Where can you get partners that aren't just looking for government handouts? Because they are short term and they will be turned off, you know, because New Zealand doesn't have this amazing abundance of money, yeah? Small tax base. So just a, a, just a something in there for, for you. Um, the other piece I talked a little bit about is... Um, Effectively, how do we scale up values? So the thing about New Zealand that is really cool, and I'm over time, but I'll just finish now, but is that you know when we've gone out to talk about water in New Zealand, what we've found is it's a real identity issue for us. So it's as important to us as our children, uh, it's as important to us as um, looking after old people, uh, it's an identity issue. So uh, that combined with uh, Māori culture, which allows you to think about indigenous old ways of knowing to find new ways of doing, allows us to actually create change here that might not be quite what you could do elsewhere. Um, so I think uh, there's something to tap into there. It very quickly goes to the negative. So I think um, if we can find lots of examples of more positive ways forward, I think you know that people in New Zealand will, will get on the bandwagon and come along, is my sense. Um, uh, so scaling up the values underpinning what you're doing. So if you're thinking about making money, um, maybe thinking about the, the global good impact that you're trying to have, because I think that speaks to the heart of New Zealanders as well. We, interesting, yesterday we had a rights and of nature conversation and New Zealanders kind of, oh, you know, actually it's a responsibility to nature. Yeah. Um, so those are just some thoughts. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, I said it at our EHF fellows. Uh, I see all of you as friends now. Because, uh, you know, in my role... Um, Quite often, the size of the challenge is really huge, and when Johan stands up there and says, you only got a decade, uh, I'm going, whew, and I've only got three years, right? Because we've got to lock some th things in um, through this government. So uh, friends, help each other out. If I can help you, 
Um, and if you can help us, you know, please come along that journey. Uh, um, that's probably enough for me. Uh, tenakoto, tenatato, tenakoto katoa.